Hello and welcome back. I'm Tyler Edlin and this is another episode of the Brush Sauce Theater. Now this is the third part in my sky painting series, so if you missed one and two, I do recommend to go back and check them out to catch you up to speed. And in this one I'll be focusing on sunsets and some sunrises. I'll be mentioning uh, you know, why they're so varied and dynamic, uh, their artistic uh, significance, uh, I'll be going through plenty of examples from cinema, fine art, and photography, and we'll be ending with a digital painting demonstration in Photoshop. So let's begin. As most of us are aware, the colors often become very bold and dramatic at dawn and dusk. The sun just presents an infinite variety of colors at this point because the sun is interacting with so many different layers of air, dust, and clouds. So without getting too textbooky, let's try to explain some of the basic principles here. Alright, so here's the setup. Earth, and we have Earth's atmosphere as most of us know it. What's going to be happening here, the sun is low in the sky and that its light is going to almost be traveling parallel to the surface of the earth. Now the light ray at this point um, is basically intersecting what they call a line of tangent. So think of it like a needle going through the shallow portion of like an orange peel. So when light is doing this, it's traveling through a much greater distance than it would be if the sun was directly overhead beaming down. And it's because of this greater distance traveled that the uh, blue wavelengths are essentially scattering a whole lot more. And that's why we're beginning to see lots more uh, kind of colors happening at a sunset. So let's make a few observations together regarding these sunsets. Up in the highest points in the sky, we have this deep, rich blue, and there's a long, slow progression to nice, very soft yellows. And that's going to have a much quicker transition to these intense oranges, all the way down to these very dull reds at the, at the core of the horizon. Now, this color progression is both brighter in value and chroma in the region right around the setting sun itself. Another thing I recommend keeping an eye on is if the air is full of moisture and dust, the setting sun will be uh, accompanied by a more uh, conspicuous red and yellow clouds, a completely different tone than we previously seen. The boldest of these red-orange glows uh, forms in the sky at the spot nearest where that sun crosses the horizon. And lastly, after the sunset, a gray layer rises up from the horizon in this anti-solar region. That's a deep dark blue line that you see right above the horizon right there. This layer of the plane is actually the cast shadow of the earth itself. And eventually the warm colors drains out of the sky entirely and sometimes soft violet glows, you know, all remains until the darkness itself. So how can we use uh, the idea and notion of sunsets in our art and our designs? You know, what are their symbolic significances? Well, as Star Wars has shown, it, the, the setting sun symbolizes the completion of a journey. This journey could be life itself, as seen in many of Studio Ghibli's animations. James Gurney's beautiful Dinotopia painting here shows us that the sunset can symbolize the completion of a day's work and shows the passage of time. And as a lot of fine artists like to capture, the awesome beauty of the setting sun is also symbolic of the beauty and mystery of life itself. Either way, there are many different interpretations and meanings of sunsets through many different uh, aspects of history and culture. Which ones did I miss? Alright, so I just finished Red Dead Redemption 2 and uh, being inspired and all and having to do this demonstration, I thought it would be a perfect kind of subject matter for this image. So I started off kind of hazy and yellow. I'm bringing in the deeper oranges and yellows with uh, those being more pure at the horizon line and I'm setting up you know, where that, that sky is meeting uh, the mountain and where it's meeting the landscape, you know, quite visually and, you know, literally here. And I have those separated across a few different layers. I'm keeping the riders, you know, the, the cowboys, the crew, the outlaws anyways, on, on a separate layer so I can toggle. Well, <laughs> an alternative approach I could have done is just to have everything be that dark red and yellow. But uh, th that's almost like an easy way out. And I wanted to have enough light in the sky to kind of paint in a little bit more information for this particular one. So in a way, I'm 
I am romanticizing the sunset a lot. I, I use a lot of gradients to set the the base uh, layer down. And for me, it's then easier to just go on top of that layer and paint some of the basic cloud shapes that I originally sketched in after. And so these clouds are going to be a bit darker. I like to use the complement of uh, the yellow and warm tones in the sky. So in this case, it's a very neutral sort of purple and or purplish pink and what I'm doing with those purples and pinks to, to make them a nice neutral color you know that's nothing that has a lot of purity into it color wise or hue wise is the proper term I'm mixing lots of subtle yellows and purples together with you know of course purple and violet being a little bit more the dominating color and so that's what helps me get a very deep and rich neutral there's even hints of subtle uh, you know very desaturated blues on the top uh, from that as well uh, and if for now, what I'm doing is just trying out some of my brushes and some of the uh, blending options with them. I'm, I'm still learning and using my brush pack that I've been reinstalling you know, over the last few weeks since I lost them all a few episodes back. And yeah, I'm just doing some implying of the details. Now, basically with any given sort of image like this, and particularly a quicker one, uh, what I try to do is block things out. In, at least in terms of the space and the colors and the structure of the scene as quickly as possible. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to every major element in the scene and I'm, I'm at least laying down a quick foundation of paint to give me a good idea of how I want to do things. And then therefore once that's established, kind of like at this little bit of a stage that I'm at here is I will then go in and, and zoom in as much as necessary to paint in some of the details on the um, uh, the focal areas and the the uh, base uh, you know structure of the painting that I've already laid in like some of the top areas of the clouds here for instance or I may go back in add some deeper pinks or cut into those clouds as well uh, so it's it gives me a good sense of the image where it's going how it how well it's working right now very early on and again because this Sun is low on the horizon that sunlight passes through so much layers of, of air at this particular time that means that more of this atmosphere and more of the scattering of the molecules it's gonna basically kinda push the violet and the the more blue colors from the actual sky from the eyes and then you know that what basically we're left is those warmer tones of the yellows orange and reds so again I'm upping that chroma around where it's actually implied that it's setting kind of right behind the riders on the right there so it's kind of gently fading out from those yellows to more subtle subtle tones and I kind of like to add that little bit of a push for it right uh, you know at this sort of stage here which in this case it's a very kind of quick painting almost like a, a full color sketch but it, it it's at a good point where I can just start to push and pull colors as necessary and so again this is a bit of a twilight hour painting I had fun with it and let's jump on to the next one so here this is celebrating another game I kind of recently completed so this is all these demos are basic glorified fan art. This is from Owlboy, a game that takes place up in the sky. Very cool. So in this one, I kind of started the opposite way. I, I laid in the whole sky of blues, violets, um, and some pinks because that, th th these are clouds. These are inherently a lot of like white objects. So they're going to be taking in a lot of these cooler tones. And I have the sun, in this case, not setting within the frame, but way, way off. You know, particularly to the right as it's currently oriented, and so that gives me the idea. Like I can put a lot, a lot of cooler tones in it to start, and just kind of delicately put some of these warmer colors yeah, up underneath the clouds where there's light going to be hitting that, and of course on the the side of the clouds as well. And it's just a different way to do it, and really goes to show you can almost start with nearly any kind of color combination <laughs> to, to build up a, a very cool um, sun uh, set or sunrise. What I recommend doing though is of course establish where your horizon line is regardless of what you're doing whether it's an illustration, a concept, even even like a character or an environment in this case and just figure out you know where that sun setting is it sun is the sun actually setting or rising within the frame you know what we can see or out of it like in this one and so it takes a little more subtlety, I think, to show it really setting out, but it, it gives you a lot of nice opportunities to kind of create a lot of nice uh, rim lighting. Like I can really, uh, what I'm going to do after I lay in these foundation uh, tones and passes, I'm going to 
warm them up on the edges where light will just kind of be hitting them. Kind of what I'm trying to show with some of these floating land masses back there. But that's a very early kind of pass, and I don't like how those are, are flowing. They are reading too much in line with the clouds. So, again, I, I'm, I start kind of cooler, a bit more neutral, and I like to soak the light right into a majority of my scenes and illustrations. And that's what's really happening here, is that it's cool, it's neutral, and I can delicately put, you know, making infinite number of layers if necessary and, and putting warmer uh, areas where I need it. So I know like these lower clouds, for instance, on the bottom side of the image, that they're all just getting ambient light and fill light from the sky. Remember, the sun setting way off screen, so the sky is going to be getting very blue and a lot darker, you know, particularly further we go out from that. So that light's kind of just gently kind of catching the top side of all these clouds that were, you know, above in this current shot. I just I quickly kind of blocked in some airships you know they're kind of fun they got a variety of textures but this is kind of they give me an opportunity to have a nice foreground element create a bit of narrative and I can show some nice light that I'm trying to imply now with like that light kind of coming in uh, from way off screen and just hitting some of the edges and it's essentially a form of rim lighting though it's a very natural one because it is coming from the Sun and not some uh, you know artificial man-made light which it's great for photography and lighting characters in certain ways but yeah it, I like to do it naturally as well like we can see here so what I'm really doing now is I'm warming up the bottom underside of those clouds remember these clouds up here are so high up and that sun's getting lower and lower things are gonna start at least in this sky shot th things will be lit you know very dynamically and, and that's what I'm trying to convey you know, I'm using little simple shape, you know, triangle brushes and stuff to just quickly kind of block out uh, some nice uh, dynamic shapes and getting them warm, you know, where I want to show that light will be hitting. And it's just a different way of working, but it's it's often fun for this sort of scene. Now I just need to get in there, you know, throw on a course the last uh, few minutes of uh, details, clean things up. You know, show that these clouds do maybe have some transparency, that they can cast shadows on things. And I'm just kind of tying it all together. But I, here's a, to contrast the last scene, which is large, largely yellows and oranges. This is a, a little bit more of a subtle, a little bit more of a delicate way to handle it. And the, you know, with the sun setting and the, these, basically these airship marauder, these sky pirates are coming in from the foreground. They're going to be creeping up on that floating landmass, just as it did in the game. And... Therefore, the village is going to be under attack. So, of course, once the the sun goes away uh, and the, the darkness comes, it's also going to bring a you know a terrifying a battle, a terrifying attack. And I'm just trying to theme it all in, you know, kind of together like that. It's not very deep or anything, but it, it helps uh, I think build a bit of uh, consistency and and world building. But yeah, the, the hardest part about this was actually kind of getting some of the materials on these airships. Uh, to look pretty good in a rather quick way. And it, 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 it's one thing to get in there and just laboriously kind of paint every section, but you know, for the sake of time on this, I want to show, like, you know, this is wood, this is um, a metallic piece, so it's going to be more blue, it's going to have more reflections, and then, of course, we have, you know, the thrusters itself. So, yeah, the, the materials will, of course, like anything, behave differently to light, and whether that light is direct or indirect, but it's a, it's a great way to kind of study things, to set up simple scenes, uh, to get research on the particular materials that you'll need to, to paint, and get as much lighting reference on that, you know, as possible. But yeah, that just about wraps this one up. So, uh, to sum things up a bit, the color of the sky is a result of two distinct effects. The first one is Rayleigh scattering, you know, particle scattering. Uh, the sky is blue because of the scattering. When we see a blue sky, that is because the air is blue. The sky is also blue because it's made of things that are, are uh, very uh, faintly blue. The faintness isn't a problem, however, uh, since there is a lot of air. Now, this explains why the sky is blue and not, for instance, uh, green or purple. Uh, in other words, scattering serves predominantly to illuminate the sky, not so much to color it. And as we can observe in many of the examples, uh, right, clouds can play a huge part of the color of the sky, 
and your scenes as well at, at sunrise and sunset often taking pinks and purples you know sometimes yellow uh, but to make things simple uh, the clouds themselves are faintly blue and they appear white unless they have a lot of adulterants in them which in, in case they would appear gray to black but uh, clouds contain a great many tiny droplets of water each of which acts like a little prism or crystal which lead to pretty spectacular light shows in this case in particular the illumination of the undersides of the clouds at a fairly shallow angle leads to sometimes spectacular iridescence and in case some of you are wondering yes pink isn't on the spectrum but its appearance is case solely by mixing of colors so yeah uh, clouds can have a huge impact on scenes uh, sunsets uh, like the ones uh, here they're notable right there they're very dynamic because they have this sort of bathed in red effect now the entire landscape takes on a surreal sort of saffron hue as the clouds are reflecting the fading sun's red and orange glow. Now this allows very little of that blue scattered light from the upper levels of that atmosphere to actually reach our reach the ground, you know, reach our point of or our field of view. And with what's happening here is it, it illustrates how some of the larger particles, you know, in this case, raindrops falling from the departing upper level uh, clouds, uh, tend to mute some of the uh, sunset colors as seen here. Now, uh, the overall coloration at this point is a dusky brownish orange, but just minutes later, once the rain has cleared in the area, the vibrant shades of red and orange overspread that scene as we can kind of see where it ends here so uh, t depending on the, of course the viewing angle and whether the, cl the the elevation of the clouds they can all take certain properties on but you know as an artist I don't I don't like to really get into that so much when I'm creating a scene I just try to ask myself do I want to go with a a warmer sort of sunset do i want to go with a cooler one do i want something dramatic and romanticized or do i want something kind of subtle or that has a, a sharp punch of color at one point versus many how loud do i want my sky to read did it should it be something that's is the image about the sky or is the sky just serving as a backdrop for the elements in the scenes that are taking place you know of course in front of it And guys, remember, I'm not a scientist. I'm just an artist that does whatever research or reference that I need to to uh, make sure I have a successful image. If you have a question about anything I talked about that, leave that below. What I do plan on covering next in terms of my topics at BST is water and some of the different ways we can approach it and, and bring it to life. That's a very popular request I get. It's not going to be the immediate next few videos I do, but it's going to be something I'm going to actively try to work towards. So uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to catch the notification when that is available. And uh, take care. Thank you for checking out my video. You can support the channel if you'd like by subscribing, liking, or commenting on my videos. You can find me on the web on Facebook, ArtStation, and Instagram. Those are the social media outlets I utilize. I also teach two courses at the Computer Graphics Master's Academy, Architecture Design and the Fundamentals of Design. Feel free to check those out. Now if the classes aren't few, I also teach one-on-one. -on -one. Join the hundreds of students around the world for one-on-one -on -one learning, and for more info, just send me an email. Also, feel free to join the Brush Sauce Discord community. There's links below. It's fun. We do weekly hangouts. There's the challenges, and it's a great place to make friends. Take care.